Dan Oman, Mike Beer. Let's take a look at the feature race at Oaklawn Park on Saturday. It's the Pippin, race number eight, going a two-turn mile with a short stretch. $150,000 is the purse. This race for fillies and mares, four-year-olds and up. The number one coach is your morning line favorite. Coach has had a very underrated career for Brad Cox. Mike, stakes winner at two, graded placed at three, and off the layoff last time out, did just fine. She fits and she likes Oaklawn. Yeah, true enough. I mean, um, she's lightly raced enough, I guess, that you would, you know, you could hold out some hope that she'll improve again. It, it, I thought it was interesting that she was such a clear-cut favorite on the morning line, though, Dan, because she's facing several horses in here who have already run faster than she ever has in her life. Including the number six, Miss Bigley, who's taken on some top competition. We'll throw up the Timeform U.S. pace projector. Timeform U.S. doesn't believe this uh, race will be run at a sprightly pace. It could favor horses on or near the lead. It's all in the notes coming off uh, a pace pressing win in an allowance race. He could get close to the pace. Uh, certainly the two breeze rider, although most of that uh, mare's uh, speed tries have come on turf or synthetic. WB Fitzy to me is an interesting sort of pace horse with blinkers back on. Yeah, that's what I thought too. I think I think WW Fitzy is going to probably go forward in here. I mean, she doesn't have to be on the lead, so it's a benefit to her uh, new rider David Cohen that he can just come out of there, get forward, and if they go too fast, I guess you know take up a seat somewhere. But I don't see why he wouldn't come out of there running. Coach was third in the fantasy last year, then ran ninth when overmatched in the Kentucky Oaks, and then went to the sidelines for the remainder of the year. Let's take a look at her four-year-old debut, optional claiming race at Oaklawn over a wet track on December the 17th, and she did what she had to do to win this race. Only a 79 buyer speed figure, but you get the feeling she can build off of it, and she was pretty game to just shrug aside jilted bride in the stretch. Yeah, I mean, she went, she went fine in here. It was just a starting off point for her over a wet track. She's had a perfect trip, you know, uh, right on the outside within range of the pace. And, you know, she's just better than these horses. Um, it's worth noting that WW50 was also in that race. She was sort of down on the rail the entire way there, getting up for fourth um, at the end. I don't know. I thought Coach ran fine, Dan, and I understand that she has some upside and can take a step forward here. I still think she's too short a price on the morning line. Breeze Ryder, the number two, has won 11 of 24 lifetime. She's won four out of her last five, and she's coming off of a stakes win, two stakes wins, one at Turfway Park over a synthetic track where she just got loose on the easiest lead possible. Yeah, I mean, she really did have a soft trip in that race. I mean, listen, her overall form is rock solid. I don't really have any knocks on this horse. She seems like she's fine on any of the three surfaces, so... You know, coming back to the main track for the first time in a while, you know, I guess it's a little bit of a concern against a field like this one, especially. Um, but she seems like she handles it. And she's got a little bit of speed, too. I wouldn't totally discount her chances. Not only does the number three WW Fitzy get blinkers again, she has had success with blinkers in the past, but she'll be making her first start off the Robertino Diodoro claim. And we have seen Diodoro claim horses and move them up. You scored with that nice horse Fort Peck at Saratoga at a big price off the Diodoro claim, I believe, earlier in the summer. WW Fitzy certainly has the back races to win. Occasionally she breaks slow, but she has the tactical speed to get right into it. Yeah, I thought she'd get a good trip in this race. I'll be honest, Dan, I didn't necessarily care. They stretched her back out last time um, over this track when Coach beat her. I didn't you know, necessarily care for the trip or ride she got that day. They just sort of took her back and, and sat on the rail behind horses for a really long way. And I actually felt like she was running on at the end of that race, but it was way too late. Um, so I, I don't think her most recent performance is, is as bad as it looks on paper. And obviously, when you go back to the form she was in down here you know, around this time last year, that's the kind of form that's going to make her really tough in here. Add in, you know, Diodoro off the claim, and you can look up his numbers on formula and formula. They are excellent numbers. Um, and if you sort of narrow it down, first off the claim, dirt routes at Oaklawn, uh, that's a very, very strong number. The four is it's all in the notes. And while her buyers are a bit light, I liked her most recent win. She's three for three at Oakland. She hulks up here and she's run well both starts this form cycle. Let's watch her last start. Mile and a 16. She's 27 to one in this race, but she ran hard every step of the way. The pace was solid. It was contested and she kept on going and just held them off. If they leave her alone on the lead, maybe she's not good enough to win, but perhaps she gets a piece of a nice purse. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that um, her three wins um, all come in over this track, and they're all just so much better than any of her other races, Dan. It does seem like, you know, she really does like the racing down here at Oakland Park, and this is a good win for her because she did contest the pace, did put away her pace rival, and you can see she was getting tired at the end, but she still held off the closers 
Um, this is obviously a way tougher race, but she seems to really like this track. And the number five, Josie's going to hope for a little bit of pace up front. She was a stakes winner for Brad Cox before being sent to the Asmussen stable. She's run three times for Steve. Her most recent race was at Laurel and maybe the wet racetrack she didn't care for. I was a little bit disappointed with that effort in the 38 go-go. She was wide most of the way, but she poked her head in front in the stretch and just couldn't sustain her rally. I sort of agree with you, Dan. I, I thought this horse, um, I was more interested in her on paper um, than I was after I really started digging into her races. She's got some figures that are going to give her a real chance in here. I, I didn't love her last race. Um, I didn't really like her, her race two back all that much either. That was a one-turn mile there. I just thought she had a good trip at every chance to win and, and wasn't really quite good enough, even though it came back a pretty fast race. She wasn't against a sharp horse last time. However, Miss Leslie did come back to win the carousel stakes at Laurel with a 91 buyer. In my opinion, the six Miss Bigley is the horse to beat for trainer Phil D'Amato. A stakes winner three starts back against restricted horses, then ran against private mission in the Zenyatta. That horse just a little bit too good. And then last time out in the Chaluki, I thought she just moved early into a pretty solid pace to make the lead. And there's no embarrassment in getting run over by obligatory, especially at Churchill Downs. Yeah, I agree. I, I think she's the horse to beat uh, as well. She's just very consistent, has really good tactical speed. I Like you, I thought she ran fine last time. Um, they brought her down here for one start last year. She beat WW Fitzy that day with a perfect trip um, over a wet track, but she still ran the race that she ran. Um, I don't know. She's not the favorite on the morning line, and I think she's the horse to beat. Wellington Wonder is a very likable Indiana bred. We saw her finish third behind Coach in the replay spotlight when we discussed Coach. She was 50 to 1 that day. She ran just fine. She's just going to have to run better. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she's hard to like off of that performance. Um, they put her on the lead there. She did her very best with it, and she wasn't um, even close to good enough at 50 to 1. Top pick time for the Pippin Stakes. Don't want Coach at a short price, although I certainly recognize her credentials. Don't exactly want Miss Bigley at a short, short price, although I do think she's the horse to beat. Josie, to me, I liked her race two back a little bit more than you did, although I did think she hung a little bit in the stretch. If she gets a little bit of hitting, that number from that race is going to make her tough. Uh, I went with her. You're going with WW Fitzy, who can get forward off the claim. Lots of little sneaky angles here. Yeah, that's what I thought. I, I just feel like she ran better than it looks last time, Dan. I'll, I'll expect Diodoro to maybe get her to move forward off the claim here. And she has those races uh, down here last winter. I think if she runs one of those, she could be tough in here. 3612 for Mike, 5621 for me. The Pippin is the feature race at Oaklawn Park on Saturday. Good luck.